What's shaking, baby? We're here, episode 65, The Diary of a Song, part 14. Dang, 14, that's crazy. Um, it's also crazy because I went from those three songs, Without You, Love You, See You Soon, and A Kinetic Aesthetic, into Face to Face. And those are like three of the most recent songs I've made versus like the first song I ever made. Face to Face is the first song I ever made. It's the first song off an EP that was released under the Blue Madonna called Songs I Made in a Past Life. And the thing, well, the value of this whole thing, 21 Pilots did a live stream for Vessel and they explained regional at best. And dude, I can't tell you how many times I watched that single minute long clip. I wish more artists would just dive into the the philosophy or the narrative behind what they made because if you're really into something they made then you'll be into them talking about it like it just makes sense but makes sense to me i don't know if it makes sense to anyone else anyways face to face baby that's something that my uncle brian said so so i don't know how i'm gonna tell you all this because i want to save some of it to just go through it in a linear way that then makes sense to everyone and myself of how I got here. But Face to Face was the first song I ever released. It was the second song I ever really made and finished where I went somewhere. So I used to work with this guy named Will Carlson. I hope I don't cry because I really miss this time in my life. The simplicity of it and... I mean, I live a very simple life now, but there was something about the naivety and the newness and the freshness and like... I think I'll rediscover that when I work with new artists, but regardless, uh, I have a very special place in my heart for this song and for this time in my life and for the work Will and I did together because Will was mainly working with metal bands. So Will Carlson is a music producer from Columbus, Ohio. Uh, I might be in like Powell or uh, Lewis Center, one of those. I remember I was going to work on a song one time with him and I asked my uncle Nick to drive me who lives in Grove City and I told him it was by Watterson but it wasn't at all by Watterson and then he, he to this day, I've never lived that down because my little cousins Breck and Colin were in the car and they were like, <laughs> dude, they were like, oh, are we there yet? And then Breck was like, this is nowhere close to Watterson. It was hilarious, man. Um, also, Romeo's has a buy one, get one free today, and I texted Ann. So the odds that we get pizza instead of me getting Chipotle just went up about 10,000%. Ann's awesome when she wants to do something, man. She's, it's so cute the way she gets so into it, and then she just has fun, and she, like, lets her guard down. Like what I've said in previous episodes about we have a, a deep, deep desire to surrender, which I really believe we do, and... I think that's when you become infatuated with someone. I think that's what happens. I was telling her that because we were watching The Office and it was season four. I think it's a really short season. It was it was the last season, the season finale, and him and Holly meet, right? And the goodbye Toby because Toby leaves, Holly comes and is an HR rep. And he says, don't move a muscle, I'll be right back. And she doesn't move. And in that moment where she doesn't move, you're completely surrendered to the other person and you're in love with that, which what they bring out in you, right? And so then you, you in a sense, see, but also mistake the ideal that is the other person. And then, you know, my advice for anyone who's married, even though I've only been married, we've been married six months now, which is crazy. They went by really fast. Um, you're going to fight with the person and you're going to have disagreements and that's totally okay. Have the fight when it's time to have the fight and resolve it and apologize for what you do wrong and try to amend your behavior. It's pretty much the same thing with God. Like, you know, what matters is not that you keep messing up and apologizing and trying to do better. What matters is that you're on an up, upward trajectory with the person, right? Because if you're in a bad spot, and this is Jordan Peterson said this, and I think about it all the time. If you're in a not so good place, right, and you're aiming upward, that not so good place becomes a hell of a lot better. And that is the truth, man. So even though you get in, like, we got into an argument this morning about we don't, like, neither of us support each other to the degree with which we could. I've been telling her, like, I'm going to blow up. Like, this is happening. Like, you, I was like, you have to understand how important this time in our lives are going to be. And she hasn't been listening to me. And then she saw that one of my TikToks got, like, 50 likes in, like, 50 minutes or something. 
which is way better than any of mine have ever done. And she went to the bathroom and she came back and she was like, I was thinking about it while I was in the bathroom that 2024 is going to be the year that your music takes off. And I was like, I wanted to explain to her like, yes, it will take off to a certain level in 2024. And then due to the quality of song that I release in 2024 and 2025 and 2026 and 2027, like it just will compound exponentially, right? So I might not be able to sell out one single 200 capacity venue right now but within the next five years like it will be a and god willing dear lord in the name of the father son and holy spirit amen oh dear god in heaven please help my music to blow up and help me to sell out them stadiums that's what's been on my heart really 360 arenas but i wouldn't mind doing it. i would love to sell out ohio stadium lord that's on my heart please meet me here and help me do that thank you god amen in the name of the father son and holy spirit amen that's all you got to say man invite god into your life give him your heart give him all these things if you just give god everything man who's gonna take better care of it freaking you or god i mean it's not even <laughs> you know what i'm saying it's not even a question so wear it proudly too anyways i was talking about face to face oh yeah you have this desire to surrender and when you fall in love with someone, that's what happens, right? And so really this relates to face-to-face -face because that time in my life, I was just completely surrendered to whatever would happen. And I was so enthusiastic about it. And I, I remember, so I walked in to, so Jordan McVeigh is my cousin. He's in a band. I won't divulge their name yet because it won't come out for another month or so. But they were in a band called 90s Kids, right? I'm not telling you anything else about it because I was sworn to secrecy. Anyways, he was in a band called Personal Public, and this was when I was in high school. So this would have been in 2015, and I know that because 21 Pilots had just released Blurry Face, and I remember thinking, like, I could make this album. It was such a strange thing to think, but I remember thinking, like, I could make something this good because I just... I understand what this thing is in a really weird way. And I didn't know how long it would take or when it would happen. I just knew one day I could. So I was at a personal public show. And it was at Double Happiness, which is closed right now. That was a place in downtown Columbus. And I was I, that's how I would spend my weekends in high school. Like, people would go to parties or basketball games or football games. I would just, like, get bullied when I went there, or I wouldn't have anyone to talk to, right? Like, people would talk about me behind my back, and then, like, I would turn around and be like, I just heard the thing you said, but I wouldn't say anything to them, right? Because I was like, dude, I don't care. Like, I don't want to go to this school. I don't want to be associated with this. I just want to make music. That's the thing I love. That's the thing I want to do. Anyways. Uh, I've Kanye said that on the Ellen DeGeneres show. He's like the creative person is either going to be like alone in a corner or the person getting beaten up. And like, I didn't know how true that was until I lived it, but that's neither here nor there. I got to quit saying that. Or maybe I got to keep saying it. Maybe you like that. I say that. I don't know. That's neither here nor there. <laughs> um, I was at double happiness, seeing a personal public show. They either went on, I think they went on, they either headlined or were the they were one of the three or four spots i sincerely don't remember because they played another show where their singer lost their voice and i don't think it was that one i think i won a couple times and i played a show at double happiness once under jtb which is what this song was originally under so this is how old this song is it was conceived in 2015 and lyrically i will do a lyrical breakdown but just know it was inspired by adele uh, turning tables she said close enough to start a war and so then the thought the what came into my mind was was it enough to start a war and i didn't know what that meant and i whole time i didn't know what the song was talking about it wasn't until my uncle darwin asked me and i told him it was it would be like i'm face to face with christ while he's on the cross and he was like wow that's really deep and i was like yeah i don't know it just came out of me i still don't know what that song means but now whenever i hear the word face to face in the bible it's hashtag father mike schmitz um, I think it was really cool because I'm like, oh, wow, God was working through me then. That's awesome. And so I met Will Carlson at Double Happiness. And Jordan was like, this is the guy who produces. Will, this is my cousin Johnny, makes music. What an encounter. I remember that to this day. And Will was like, oh, hey, like, I was like, yeah, can I like record at your house? And he was like, sure. And then I came over. He charged me like 50 bucks a session. 
I don't know if it doesn't matter that I tell people that now. And I remember just being so excited because I brought him this project and the song was what I thought done. And so he ended up stripping like tons of stuff out and was like, what if we just work with these chords and this beat and then you come up with some other melodies. And so we produced it. We probably did like two or three eight hour sessions and we recorded vocals in one of those. And then face to face. Is there anywhere for you to run? United Kingdom. Still don't know what Brexit was. <laughs> um, no, but the first song I did with him was called Up in Flames, which was originally called Army of Hearts. But that never got, that wasn't released first. For some reason, I was like, I think Face to Face is going to be better, and I'm going to release that one first. And then I released it on SoundCloud. And so that would have been my s junior year because I played football sophomore year. And my June, that would have been August of my, August of 2015 was when this song first got released. And the cover art was a picture of like my shoes from when I performed, I think that's what it was, at the a &R Music Bar which is still around today. I can't wait to sell that place out. See, it'll be so weird because like the 1975 talked about when they blew up and they said that they were with the same people and just all of a sudden everyone knew them and they were in new places. So it was this feeling of nostalgia yet newness. And I can't help but feel like I'll have a same feeling, but it'll kind of be like the opposite. Like the places might be the same, but the whole like electricity of the event will be new and I won't be used to that, but it is what it is. Anyways, anywho, after we made up in flames, we immediately made face to face and this would have been May or June of 2015. And then I released him then under the moniker JTB which are my initials, John Thomas Britt. And then, so that was 2015. And I had this written on my phone, but I don't, my phone's over there. It's all right. I won't pick it up. I want to see if I can remember it myself. 2015. And then just for a couple of years, I went under JTB. And then, uh, then under Harler. For some reason, I never released him. So these four songs, Face to Face, System Overload, and Gravity. There were plenty of others that were released under JTB that I just haven't found yet. If I could find him, I would release him. I might have to ask Will. Anyways, I then kind of just, it was another one of those moments where I was just in my way. And then, let's see, this, so this was released in October of 2023. And so what had happened, I'll tell you exactly what had happened. I finished Farewell 57 on October 1st of 2023 and then immediately started freaking out because I didn't have anything for songs to sing The Lonely Hour. Even though that didn't have to come out for like three years, right? Or two, two and a half, three years, whatever it is. And I do have ideas for it, so I was just in my way, always. And... Then I found face-to-face, -face, system overload, gravity, and deja vu on an old JTB. You can probably still find it because I don't think I have the password for it. It was on an old JTB YouTube page that I had. And so what I did was I downloaded all of those official audios with um, you, the YouTube converter. I then renamed the files... Um, like face-to-face -face master or system overload master and then <laughs> uploaded them with that cover art which was the old blue adana logo for the 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 blue light right because then it became the the sanskrit kind of like desert looking thing that it is now it'll change 50 billion other times but that's what i did and it reminded me fred again said that so he used to work with Brian Enu. If you don't know who Brian Enu is, that's Brian, and then his last name is E-N-O. Definitely look him up. He's one of the most influential artists. He was in, I think it's called Roxy Music. Uh, he produced a lot for U2. He produced for Coldplay. He's just one of the most inspirational people 
that you'll ever hear, right? Just the way he views art, the his process of creation, the way he communicates it, it's really attractive. And Fred said that, also check out Fred again. He's, I'm sure you know who he is, but anyways. Um, they were neighbors, so Fred knew him growing up, and they mentored each other. He, Brian said that, where he was like, people always say that I influenced Fred, but they need to understand how much Fred influenced me. Anywho. Brian and Fred were working on an album, and there was a song that they sent off to mastering that was an MP3. They bounced it as an MP3, but they really liked the way that song felt. And then the people said, well, we won't master this unless it's a um, a WAV file. And that's just like a different format of audio, right? So what they did was they just renamed the file. Instead of MP3, they just like shift enter backspace WAV instead of MP3 and they sent it to him and they mastered it right and so that's and it was the same thing like and that's the that's where when people say that your art is also a business I think the reason why I'm now posting on social media and making more podcasts and all this stuff now is because that's that's such a mediocre way to explain what the thing is. This is here. You want advice for how to grow your music, how to expose your music to more people. This is my advice. Do you love your art? Do you believe in your music? Is your music the best you can make it? Then you have an obligation to put it out. If you're, if you answered yes to all three of those things, right? Wait until you have something to answer yes to all three of those things. Then you have an obligation to put it out and you have an obligation to treat the content which promotes it with as much love, care, affection, and attention to detail as you do in making the art, right? Because you are then responsible for communicating it. Because what a song is, is it's a method of communication, but you have to communicate it in order for it to get communicated, right? Does that make sense? You have to communicate your song, which in itself is a form of communication. It's kind of meta communication is what social media is, but you have an obligation to then share that with people in a creative way, right? It isn't you post, hey, I made this song. Actually care about it, right? Sacrifice for it. And then guess what? As soon as you accept you have to do that, you're going to enjoy it. And as soon as you enjoy doing it, you're going to be enthusiastic about it. And then it's going to be awesome, right? I kind of wish I hadn't deleted all my old TikToks because you could see someone actually improving at it. But they were so bad. Like, they were like me, like, making breakfast. Hey, listen to my song. But it doesn't matter because the fact that you're doing it is the thing that matters. And you will improve, right? We've talked about this. Quality is begotten by quantity. Just keep doing it and you'll get better. Anyways, now that I'm off my soapbox face-to-face, I just got out of my way and started posting them. And then, of course, I made the sped up and the slowed and reverbed, which we'll talk about the importance of that. And really, it was just a way to, I guess, nicely... Make it appear as though the songs I made in the past were, you know, related, which they are. And they are, it, they're songs I made. It feels like a past life because I was under a different moniker. I knew different people. I was, I really was a different person. Um, I just, wow. You can tell, like, I've been talking about this for like 20 minutes and I couldn't even talk about the other songs for like two or three. That's crazy. Take this and the length of this podcast versus the length of the past three with why you should fully apply yourself with all of your songs. I'm going to remember that, and I'm going to listen to this next time I don't want to work on a song. But as always, thanks for listening. Up next, System Overload. Stay tuned, and as always, do your homework. Ain't no way to D in a day. Mofo better come out here and show me, show me. Ain't no way, way to D in a day, day. Mofo better come out here and show me. Damn.